today is a little is one of the nerve-wracking days that I have. I'm nervous about it because we're bringing up the breed pens with the breeder bucks. My job is to stand behind the last door before the deer make it into the barn. I'm on a four-wheeler. You got a, what you think is a 200-inch buck in front of you looking at you going, I want to go your way. No, I got to have you go that way. Which one's going to get them? You're playing chicken is what you're doing. And then you have these 200-inch bucks running past you, and you just pray to God, just keep going by, just keep going by. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the creation of the white-tailed deer. May we grow with knowledge to preserve what you have given us as we are in amazement of this animal. May it remind us of your glory and your presence in our lives. We pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us to be respectful of your creation as, as our, our souls, souls find peace in your, your great, great outdoors. outdoors. Amen. Amen. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Kia Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. Well, today is a little, is one of the nerve wracking days that I have. I'm nervous about it because we're bringing up the breed pens with the breeder bucks. Normally we don't try to bring the breeder bucks up with the does and the fawns if at all possible, but there's no way to separate these breeder bucks from the rest of the group. So we're gonna bring them all up at one time. Now they've just gone to hard horn. So if they choose to hook a doe or a fawn, choose to stick them other times we're going to lose some deer so we really have to be gentle and you have to really read does that buck want to go up there is he willing to go into that barn or is he flat out going to turn around or want to come back on you you have to be able to read what the deer is uncomfortable with to get them past that point so you can get them to where you want which for us is in the barn safely Doug and Talon begin the process of slowly moving Guardian's pen into the runway, which leads directly to the handling facility. And then from there, they'll begin tagging fawns. Guardian is a two-year-old who grew an impressive 225 inches this past summer. Well, Guardian has a very unique temperament. Uh, personality. He's very curious about new things, curious about different things, and he's very calm. He has no problem if there's a change in his pen or the area, goes to it, investigates, very quick to investigate. As a, as a one and a half year old, he was always coming towards the four wheelers uh, to investigate, like, what are you doing? What are you up to? What are you going to change in here? So as Guardian comes into the barn, it is a wave of whitetails, a mix of fawns and moms, and it captivates you. It's almost as if time stands still, and then he emerges. My job is to get the three gate shut, and Doug will take him the rest of the way into the barn. I start to shut the three gate, Doug's walking right towards me, telling me, okay, let's get this locked. All I see is deer coming, doubling back, heading right for him. All the deer have already gone up towards the barn, so I'm assuming and I'm thinking they've gone around the corner. But instead, you turn around, you look, you stay calm. Come on, let's go. Get them turned, and as soon as they turn, you hop on the four-wheeler and you keep moving them. Keep them going the direction they're going where they don't have a chance to turn back around on you. And I can hear the deer start to come, so the adrenaline's pumping that much more. There's three or four does probably that run through. Can't see anything that's going on outside. I have absolutely no idea what's happening. And 
he gets into about the second stall area and I was able to catch him in the exact spot that we wanted to and we were able to do it so there's no does in there with him. So he was by himself, nice and calm, so that takes a lot of pressure off. In the corner! Every day in the farm you have to be ready to be pulled outside if they need you to. And that was one of those days. Oh, fun times. In the process of moving deer into the barn, one fawn slipped by. Heather now has to lead this fawn into the barn by herself. If the fawn decides to bolt towards her, she could be injured. They're nervous, they're scared. They don't really know, like, why am I being pushed this way? They, you have to really just try to make them go. Say whatever you have to say, make the noises, like, please go, run, keep going. Um, otherwise, it's happened to town, it's happened to the guys where they decide to go at you. Okay. But she came prepared to work in the building, not out in the barn, so that's an oops on dad, I guess. So thankfully, nothing happened to me. It's like, oh, today's Friday. It's fine. Nothing crazy is going to happen. I wear sandals. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Coming up next, the staff gets to see Guardian up close and personal. He's coming. And later, Michael asks if he can try catching fawns. All this and more on Conquest 200. This segment was brought to you by Hancharit Chiropractic. We get your back in the game. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel. Makers of Polar King, Rule the Elements. By Conquest Sense, makers of Evercom and VS1. By Grizzly Coolers and United Deer Farmers of Michigan. By the Dunkel Veterinary Hospital and Armada Grain Company. And by 10 Point Crossbows. Doug and the team have successfully separated a breeder buck named Guardian from his herd of does and fawns. Before they release him back to his pen, the opportunity was given to the entire staff to see this buck up close. Heather, you're just gonna stand there, and when I finally say open it, just pull it open. Everybody stands a little straighter. It's almost like you're in the presence of the king. And you are quiet and solemn. Of course, everybody's got their phones out taking pictures because you'll never be this close to him again. He's coming. Yep. Being in the barn with Guardian and being that close to a 200-inch buck, uh, actually alive and, you know, well, seeing him that close is amazing. Definitely a lot bigger up close. You know, you're standing within a few feet of him, peeking through the slats, looking at this buck, and man, he's just awesome. There's just nothing like it, having that living, breathing, awake creature that is so regal and so huge, right there where you could almost touch him. To have him up that close, you know, all of a sudden you're looking and going, Wow, there's a 215 inch two year old. That's cool. Let's get him out. Let's get to work. Let's start sorting the does and the fawns, get them tagged. Now the guardian is off to his pen, the real work begins. First step is to separate does from the fawns. We have to bring the does into the squeeze, uh, give them their vaccinations, and also get their tag numbers because Doug already has a list of where he wants these does to go to for breeding or scent collection. Then before releasing the does back to their pen, they'll receive a full inspection and given vitamins and wormer to ensure they're receiving the best bill of health for the winter months ahead.
I don't realize until I come back here exactly how much I miss working here. Um, the very few days that I actually showed up here, it felt like work. It felt like I was getting paid to come play. I mean, we had a lot of hard work going on here. It's very intense. You, know, you don't realize how much somebody actually knows about their profession until you work alongside of them for three years. He knew an answer for everything, 100% of the time, and he didn't hesitate. And working along with him, you realize the longer you work with him, he's never wrong. He knows this industry back and forth, upside down. And the impressive thing is he's kind of learned it on the fly as he goes. He didn't have mentors like I do. He didn't step in and work for somebody that, you know, had this much knowledge in the industry. He picked it up as he went and he's completely self-taught. So to be able to come back here and help is a true blessing for me. And, you know, I'm incredibly blessed to have Doug and Karen trust me enough to bring me back even though I've been gone for almost a year. Well, right now, Guardian's new home is Pen 5. Uh, he was in Pen 4, we're gonna move him to Pen 5. Probably later this fall, we'll move him back to 4. Just so I can watch him from the house, to be honest with you. Coming up next, Michael tries to catch fawns for the first time. And later, the best typical Doug has ever raised enters the barn. All this and more, right here on Conquest 200. This segment was brought to you by High Rack Ranch of Michigan. This week's tip from the Deer Professor is brought to you by High Rack Ranch of Michigan. Once we separate the fawns, we find out male and female, and we, we do the, the tagging of them and identification of them. Um, Mother Nature, God created it in a perfect situation that you're gonna end up 50-50 no matter how you look at it. We can artificially inseminate, we can naturally uh, breed our, our does. If you look at a 10-year window, you will be within one or 2% of 50% doe fawns, 50% buck fawns. It's very important, we put all of the doe fawns together in one, what we call pen, and we put all of the buck fawns in another pen, and we don't put them next to each other. Now, there's a specific reason for that. If a doe fawn reaches 60%, basically 63% of her yearling adult weight, she will cycle in and come into heat at six months old. And a little buck fawn, if he rubs that little nub on his head, he will actually produce semen at six months old, and two six months old can breed. And I don't want our fawns having fawns. It would be like an 11 or 12, 13 year old girl having a baby. They don't know how to take care of them and their body is still developing. So we make sure that we sort the females and the males into two separate pens and keep them apart. Doug and I share some of our workers, um, but for the majority, Terry, Michael, they're inside with me with the scent company, packaging, shipping, overseeing the office. I was, I'd say I had some nervous excitement because it's, once again, it's always fun to be out there and hands-on, um, but I got with the dear professor. So I asked Doug, you know, what are the one, two, threes? What do I need to know? And he coached me a couple of simple tactics. And over the years, I've seen people want to try this out and everybody thinks, ooh, fawns are so cute and they're so sweet. But I'm telling you what, a three month old fawn will light you up. And this could easily turn into the hot mess express is what I'm expecting. So um, I'm, I'm pretty sure this can get pretty interesting. So we'll see what happens. You know, I was, I definitely anticipated having to go ahead and get full body into it. I mean, I'm six foot, about 230 pounds. I'm not the strongest guy, I'm not the weakest guy. And I definitely had to go ahead and use a lot of muscles. The back end, pin it and grab the back end. It's not a bottle fed. This thing has never been touched by a human. He, he really wanted to kind of lock down on it. And again, it's natural to lock towards the front end of it. Let's go. And he kind of got caught sliding towards that front end. Um, 
We got it done. I got my stuff done, and then we kind of helped him adjust. They're all going in the back. Good job. Good job, Mike. going. It's a job that requires patience, muscle, and above all, technique. There truly is a technique, and sometimes it's frustrating, it's frustrating for me to sit there knowing I know how to do that, but I'm doing this part of it. I almost want to just go, just let me go grab it. It's quicker, it's easier. You know, okay, you get in there and show us what you can do, you, Mr. one Arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he always goes, yeah, I used to put gates up by myself. And so we always go, yeah, I'll go out there and dart that deer as I'm putting a gate on and tarping it at the same time while I'm filling a feeder, you know, with 60 mile an hour winds all at the same time. That's what I used to do back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> take your gloves off. Now when you do the DNA, you just hold it away and take Wait, it to him. Man, you really gonna go in there? Hold on, man. I can't. Not that you can't. Can. Oh, how many oh, dozen? I'm gonna get in there and catch some fawns, and they're gonna look and go, "Oh, that's how it's done." I just took your two and carried them over like hey, they were appreciate you. nothing. Are you sure? Because you called him Old Man River. I didn't. <laughs> Hi, buddy. The old man still got it. I mean, he, he caught it and, you know, did his thing. And uh, I, I even wasn't expecting him to, you know, pull the fawn that good still. But the old man still got it. Still got it. That's how it's done, guys. See, boys, I still have it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Coming up next, we're going to bring Bruce into the barn. Best typical I've ever raised in 26 years. So don't go anywhere. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. By Conquest Sense, makers of Evercom and VS1. By Van Beek Natural Science. And by Ray C's The Extreme Store. By Versa Skins and Herd Evolution. Doug and his crew are preparing to bring up a breeder buck named Bruce, a two year old 7x7 seven seven typical that is a son of Die Hard. With Nate in the barn and Talon behind the swing door, Scott and Doug begin to round up Bruce's pen. Bruce, who is the son of Die Hard, who was an iconic deer on this farm, has surprised us all. We're always looking for that perfect, typical whitetail and we come incredibly close. And Bruce is it. This pen is Bruce's pen. Genetically, this is the best typical buck I have ever raised in 26 years. I can tell that Doug almost feels like the father to this deer. His chest is full of pride. My job is to stand behind the last door before the deer make it into the barn. Um, just in case they were to come back, I can shut it so that whoever's on the four wheeler doesn't get crushed by the whole herd. And it was almost like he decided, no, my pen's back here. I know I'm past my pen. All those decisions, what do you do? Do I give up? Turned right around and just kind of looked at me like, I'm not going that way. I want to go back that way. You're playing chicken is what you're doing. I'm on a four-wheeler. You got a, what you think is a 200-inch buck in front of you looking at you going, I want to go your way. No, I got to have you go that way. Which one's going to give? It's a little nerve wracking and then you have
have these 200 inch bucks running past you and you just pray to God, just keep going by, just keep going by. <laughs> You know, there's kings of forest and kings of jungles, but the white-tailed buck is the king of the woods. And I guess that that's what all of us are so fascinated with by this amazing creation. You can tell he is the king. You know, once Bruce got into the barn, it's kind of like, okay, he's safe. You know, now we can sort and then we can let him back out. But you know, to look eye to eye level with him and really look at his antlers and look at his body, it's pretty awesome to see him that up close. And, and there was one point he and I did make eye contact. We just kind of stared at each other. And when I looked at that seven by seven frame and the beam length on this deer at two, two years old, I went, that deer right there is the best typical I have raised in 25 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's now the number one breeder. He's gonna have the best does, the best combinations. I've gone from the six by six frame to the seven by seven frame. I've been working for years to get there. And here right in front of me, four or five feet in front of me, is the deer that finally did it for me.